I'm a portrait artist and I was an illustrator at Boeing for about 17, 18 years. I had about 20 customers in, inside Boeing a week and these all were projects and groups of people who formed teams and accomplished these projects and you had to have a good memory. So I had a good memory. I developed it over the years and under a lot of stress. And uh, now I couldn't go back to any of those jobs, in my opinion, because of the memory. Cognition affects everything that we do. It makes up who we are. So when you have a change in your cognition, a lot of times it's a very personal change, and it affects people quite deeply. Most people think about the resting tremor, the stoop posture, the slow gait um, for Parkinson's disease. Um, as we've been studying Parkinson's disease uh, uh, over time, we're recognizing that other what we call non-motor symptoms can kick in, and one of the major ones has been cognitive impairment or it's a memory problems. We used to think that there, it was only a motor disorder and that there weren't any cognitive changes when it first was uh, discovered. However, the majority of patients do show at least some mild cognitive changes. Forgetting the subject of what I'm talking about, my vocabulary has gone to hell. Um, just concentration, lack of. Doctors like to use the term dementia, which is a very scary term. Um, and dementia really means that you've, you've lost some thinking skills from a previous higher level and that that loss has been sufficiently severe that it impairs your ability to take care of some kind of day-to-day -day activity. About 60% of the patients um, who we now know have cognitive changes in Parkinson's disease. And about 30% actually meet criterion for Parkinson's disease dementia. What most people think about when they think about dementia, they think of Alzheimer's disease. And Alzheimer's disease, in contrast, is a disorder of what we call short-term memory. People have trouble holding on to new information. So you can have a conversation with them, and then you come back an hour later, and they don't remember anything about the conversation. Um, for Parkinson patients, that's usually not as much of a problem. What they have problems with is actually what I like to call the in the now memory, why you're in a discussion. They're having trouble um, sort of keeping up. And so you'll often find, for example, when we test people that as they try to hold on to information, the Parkinson patients struggle. But if you eventually get it in there, you can get them to, to pay attention to it and keep with it, they hold on to information much better than people with Alzheimer's disease. I don't lose the information. It's just filed away in my brain and sometimes it doesn't pop up subconsciously. I have to consciously search it out and sometimes it takes a long time but it comes. Neuropsychological evaluation allows us to provide an accurate diagnosis so that the treatment can be tailored to the patient. We have a test of vocabulary which is a good test of a person's background education sort of try to get a sense of how, how cognitively intact were they? It's really not a performance on one particular test that's going to tell me what is going on with the patient. It's really their performance across all the different tests. The sections I do I best in, I'm not very good at any of them, but is uh, anything to do with graphics, like drawing squares and in perspective and triangles and circles and the variations of them, I have no problem with. We have them try to remember a list of words and we go over it three times, and he was very slow to pick those words up. They list uh, five or six animals, and then they go and talk about other problems, and then they come back and say, what animals were they? So sometimes I remember them, sometimes I don't. But then when we presented him with a list of a bunch of different words, he was very easily able to pick out every single word that we had given him before, a word list of 12 words. So he's sort of, Again, that par very Parkinson's-like trouble getting that information in, maybe a little trouble retrieving it spontaneously, but it, the information's in there, unlike Alzheimer's where the information never gets in. So I have good and bad results depending on the test, but real problems in the memory department. Usually the cognitive decline occurs later on in the disease process. So um, it might be five, ten years into a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease before they would potentially start noticing more severe changes in their cognition. I've had patients 
with what we might call mild cognitive impairment, where they're, they're, they have subtle changes, but it really doesn't impair their ability to do their day-to-day -day activities. And that can last even 10, 15 years before they move on to what we call dementia, where it, it is interfering with their activities of daily living. We have a th group that gets together on Thursday afternoon or evenings and have gotten together for years. And all of a sudden, uh, I just felt like everybody's sitting around watching me shake. And I, I go to tell a joke and I forget the punchline or, or my timing's off. or it, So I've just kind of withdrawn from that. A behavioral symptom that often goes with cognitive impairment is something we call apathy, um, sort of a lack of drive. It's harder for people to get up and get going. I find that with Parkinson's, I have good days and bad days. And uh, bad days are kind of uh, indecisive. Uh, severe shakes, uh, lack of ambition, and other days I feel great, energized. Staying physically and mentally active I think is very important. We do think people generally do better. Um, at the worst, by being physically active, you reduce the risks of other diseases that we know can aggravate your Parkinson's symptoms and your cognitive impairment. It's important for us to provide the caregiver with information um, and then also teach them different strategies that they can use to help keep the patient um, more independent. So by using compensatory strategies like pill boxes that have timers on them, that they can lay out all the pills, but then have a timer go off that will remind the patient to go take their medications. Um, these are just easy little strategies that they can do that will reduce their caregiving burden um, and help the patient remain, um, remain independent for as long as they possibly can. There are some medications that can be used to treat the cognitive impairment of Parkinson's disease and depending on the severity of the impairment I may uh, discuss that with the patient with the family and decide if they're going to uh, um, utilize those medications. I would go to medication if I became severely incapacitated. If I couldn't keep up with people walking, if I couldn't uh, accomplish things, lost all ambition, memory started to go, I, at some point I'll probably have to make a decision when to go on medication. With regards to cognitive impairment and Parkinson's disease, I usually tell people it's kind of a good news, bad news story. And the bad news is cognitive impairment is common in Parkinson's disease. The vast majority of patients will develop it. Um, the good news is it's not Alzheimer's disease. You maintain your personality. There's still lots of things that you can do when you have cognitive impairment. There are drugs that we can use to help you out. Um, in, in the long run, you can still enjoy your life.